Assalamu alaikum, dear brothers and sisters. Today, we want to talk with you about the fact that we always consciously have to be careful not to commit those actions that may incur the wrath of Allah on us. It's very, very scary when the wrath of Allah touches us. For example, from the history of the Prophet's peace be upon them all, you know about what happened to the community that Allah was angry with. Allah, He is our Rahman and our Rahim, Afurur Rahim, Shadid al Iqab. But at the same time, He is one who sends and inflicts the most painful punishment. And do not forget about that. It's important that you watch this video to the end and do not miss important moments in order to get benefit from it. Allah, in many verses of the Quran, informs us about heaven. At the same time, He also informs us about hell. Allah is the most merciful. But along with this, we should not forget that there is a azab, the wrath of Allah. There are people who sin day and night, have a fun committing haram forbidden deeds. At the same time, they they say that Allah is most merciful, thereby counting on His forgiveness. We remind ourselves first of all, and then you, that Allah says about Hippocrates who were deprived of getting to paradise. Allah says, The tormented will cry out to those graced, Were we not with you? They will reply, Yes, you were, but you choose to be tempted by hypocrisy, eagerly awaited our demise, doubted the true, and were deluded by false hopes until Allah's decree of your death came to pass and so the chief deceiver deceived you about Allah. There are life circumstances and people who contribute commission of sin and when you are immersed in sins. At the moment, the imaginary salvation for you is the thought that Allah Rahim is forgiving, merciful. Yes, of course, He is forgiving, merciful. However, He also sends the most painful punishment to people who disobey in so Surah Al-Haq Allah mentions those who books of deeds will be given to them in the right hand and also mention those whose books of deeds will be given to them in the left hand and describes in detail what will happen to them in hell. Therefore, we should always be aware and remember that we can potentially be one of two positions. This is the mercy and wrath of Allah. That's why the ruler of the faithful, Umar ibn al that may Allah be pleased with him. He once said, I judge my deeds by hope between mercy and the wrath of Allah. So, what actions mentioned in the Quran should we avoid so as not to incur the wrath of Allah? The first group reflect on the actions of those mentioned in Surah Al-Fatiha. Allah says, Guide us along the straight path, the path of those you have blessed, not those you are displeased with or those who are astray, on whom the road has fallen and not the lost ones. Explaining this verse, the scholars agreed with the Jews are those on whom the road of Allah fell and the Christians got lost and became unbelievers. The question is why? Why did the road of Allah fall on the Yahudi Jews? That is, they are the ones who have incurred the road of Allah. The reason is that the Jews had knowledge, but there were no actions and accordance with knowledge. They knew what was true, but they chose not to follow the straight path. When the Messenger of Allah وسلم, came with a messenger from Allah from among the Arabs, from the line of the Prophet Ismail, peace be upon him, they directly rejected the message of the Prophet وسلم. They knew about the coming of the lust of the Prophet and were waiting for it. But because the Prophet was not a Jew, they rejected him. The Jews know that truth, but they choose not to follow the truth. And it's not just the Jews. Think about ourselves. How many times we knew it was wrong to do this, but we did it that way. We know in the truth following a false path, and this is to know what a great injustice is, and still do it. And the great injustice is to associate partners with Allah, not to recognize Him as the Creator, and not to follow His Prophet. Reflect and repent before the wrath of Allah overtakes you. The next group of people from Allah is angry with our people who avoid and neglect the duty of their worship. Now let's speculate. Many scholars say that one of the signs of the worth of Allah is the lack of tabafiq, a correct understanding of religion and following its precepts. There are many people who have the time 
money, an opportunity to perform Umrah or do Hajj, but they don't do it because of the absence of Tawfiq, or how many times sitting at home and knowing about the approach of the time for prayer have you missed it. And this is itself is an alarming sign. Whenever we can do something good, but we don't, this may be the reason for the absence of Tawfiq in us, which is a sign that Allah is displeased with us. It's necessary to understand this in order to improve. And the third group of people are those people who have pride, self-delusion, and arrogance in their hearts. You tell others that you have a good car, a beautiful house, and it's all the result of your personal efforts, without acknowledging that Allah has given you all this. And it was solely by His will and grace that you were able to succeed. And an example of arrogance, this is when you abandon the truth, giving preference to your personal truth rather than the truth of Allah. Starting with polytheism, making ruinous sins and ending with minor sins. Arrogant are those whom Allah is angry with. Allah says, without a doubt, Allah knows what they conceal and what they reveal. He certainly does not like those who are too proud. Quran Surah An Nahl. The first is those people who oppress themselves, those who indulge in sins. Allah says, as for those who disbelieve, I will subject them to a severe punishment in this life and the hereafter. They will have no helper in this world and in the next. It was customary for the Meccans to take care of those who wanted to live in Mecca. There was no possibility such a person had to find a patron from among the Meccans who would provide him with protection and support. Allah tells us that in the hereafter, we will have no helpers except Allah, but He will reward those who believe and do righteous deeds in full. Indeed, Allah does not love the wrongdoers. Allah clearly says that He does not love those who commit in iniquity against themselves. The fifth group is wasteful, extravagant people. Our religion teaches us moderation and spending, not to be stingy, but also not to waste. Allah says, O oh, children of Adam, dress properly whenever you are at worship, eat and drink, but do not waste. Surely he does not like the wasteful. The sixth group of people are tricarios and traitors. Allah says, And if you all see signs of betrayal by people, respond by openly terminating your treaty with them, surely Allah does not like those who betray. The seventh group is those who expose their own sins. This are people who commit sins and Allah hides them from people, but people themselves expose themselves, making their sins public. In some cases, they can speak with pride about the sins committed. And the eighth and the last group are those who commit a small shirk. Ria is hypocrisy which is also small shirk. For example, you are not doing good deeds for the sake of Allah's pleasure, but in order for someone to magnify you, praise you, reward you. I hope this video was useful for you. If so, then subscribe to our channel, leave comments and ideas for subsequent videos.